What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it is 50 cents a day And don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com Get yourself a copy of Trap Chords Volume 2 Get yourself a copy of Playlist MIDI Drums Get yourself a copy of Fear And don't forget to stop by Spotify and follow The Spicy Sundays Podcast the ultimate hip hop producers podcast. Now today we're going to be looking at um, a technique that was available to us in Ableton Live, but has now come to the Studio One world, and that is the um, resample, like ta like tape time stretch resample. What does that mean? Why is it important? And why should you care? Um, so. For me personally, I don't think if I if I hadn't been using um, the MPC by itself, I don't think that I would care about this. Right. But using using the MPC, I've had to um, I've had to go into a more um, a more older um, boomer style of workflow and when when i go ahead and i chop up samples on the mpc um if i want them to go faster or slower um i i wind up i wind up pitching them up or down and that's kind of and that's kind of how you know that's kind of how i catch a groove on samples on the mpc and doing that um provides um a completely different workflow as opposed to how I would do it inside Studio One to where I would kind of everything would be focused around pitch, right? Like I would I would uh you know um I have a I have an eight oh eight that I that I'd want to use and I know that it sounds this eight oh eight sounds amazing in the key of F. So I would, you know, be inclined to pitch most of my samples to F to match this eight oh eight. Um that's kind of that's kind of the process that I that I would go through. And in the process of doing that, what I wound up doing was I I would make these, you know, these these amazing beats, um, but it would neglect a lot of the other sounds that I had on my system because I was I was making beats that worked with one sound, right? Um, using the MPC in the way that I was describing before led to me discovering um, other useful sounds um, because I wasn't I wasn't um you know making a beat around my favorite 808. So what does that have to do what does that have to do with studio 15 right well studio 15 has added has added a feature and there's there's sneaky the, the the there's sneaky little features inside studio 15 that aren't you know that aren't like huge game breakers or anything but they're like it's like oh that's nice and one of these is the um changing the um the time stretch algorithm to tape resampler now i don't know if you guys knew you had this before but you could go into your inspector you could you could switch it you could switch your time stretch from you know uh, elastic pro drums which focuses on transients um sound which is you know which is a format this is this is really good for time stretching loops you should change it when you when you're time stretching your loops um and then if you're using you know like if it like if it's like a bass loop or you know a piano loop or something if it's a monophonic instrument uh solo is really good but tape resample what it does is all right so i have this loop right we know that the tempo is let's set the file tempo it's 132 beats per minute right so if I go down to 132 beats per minute and we play it, you get this. Right? Nothing crazy. Um, when you listen to when you listen to the sample here, it's the same exact same exact thing, right? So if I was if I was if I was in an MPC, right? And I wanted to, and I knew that this loop was 132 beats per minute. Um, if I wanted to, if I wanted to make a faster beat, what I would do would I is I would pitch this up until until I caught a groove, right? Something is something that felt good. Um, Studio One gives us gives us this same ability, but instead of instead of pitch it, instead of pitching it up, 
if if I just go to the tempo which I want to use, which is maybe say I don't know 156.30, right? You see how you you see how we it, it maintained the length of the sample, so it time stretched it. But now when we listen to it, we get this. Now, if you've never, if you've never used an MPC, I could see how this particular time stretch algorithm, it could be just something where it's just like, I don't understand what's the point CMP. Couldn't I just, couldn't I just use the transpose and again, kind of do the same thing. And the answer is no. Because when you look at, um, if you look at the start page, uh, the homie Craig Anderson made this chart for, um, for everyone. And you see that kind of, kind of the way that kind of the way that things pitch up, um, and down when using this algorithm is, is it is, is it's not exact, right? So if you if you um when you use this method in changing in changing tempos is you're not is it's not gonna it's going to detune the sample a little bit is what i'm getting at right um it's gonna be it's gonna be rare that you that you hit on on perfect middle tuning and that is what <laughs> That little bit of um, that little bit of detuning that comes from you know that comes from this not being an exact uh, process is going to is going to be a vibe within itself. So I encourage you guys to um, just 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 mess around with with this uh, with this time stretch feature. I'm really excited that it's here, and I understand again if you never use an MPC, um, if if you've never went through with this method, you might have zero interest in it. But I promise you, it is worth experimenting with. I think you guys are really gonna like it. Um, when you're uh, when you're time stretching your loops and stuff, it's gonna add um, a different um, a different dimension to that workflow. So this is CMP with Craft Master Productions Studio One Tutorials.com. You guys keep it simple, but do not be basic. And we will see you on the next one.